Hello, my name is Harold Penn, and as the Interim Director of Hebrew Foundation School, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our first ever virtual open house. Choosing a school for a child is one of the most important decisions a parent has to make. We have put together our virtual open house in order to give you information that we hope will help you making this decision. After the open house, should you have any questions or any concerns, please contact us. HFS has been in the community for 50 years. We're celebrating our 50th anniversary. That means 50 years of French immersion, English instruction, and Jewish learning. We strive to reach the potential of each student, and we work together with the parents, the teachers, administration, in order to ensure the success of each child. And we look forward to each of you becoming a member of the Hebrew Foundation family. Enjoy the tour. You'll hear about each of our departments. And most important, you will see how the teachers speak about the school and the students. The love they have for the students, the concern, and this relationship is what makes Hebrew Foundation School so different from any other institution. Enjoy the tour, and once again, thank you for joining us. Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Selman, and I am the proud principal of Hebrew Foundation School. Tonight, you're gonna to meet some of my teachers, you're gonna hear about the programs, and we're really excited that you're all here, so enjoy the show. Bonjour, je suis Nathalie Morin, enseignante à la maternelle à l'école de formation hébraïque. Je suis à l'école depuis plus de 30 ans. J'ai la chance de faire partie d'une très bonne équipe d'enseignants et d'enseignantes qui collaborent énormément entre eux. Notre objectif premier à la maternelle, Marie-Josée et moi, qui est ma collègue de français, c'est de rendre l'apprentissage du français le plus agréable possible pour les enfants et le plus naturel possible. Alors, on fonctionne beaucoup sous forme de jeux interactifs. On commence la journée avec un grand cercle. On choisit notre petit professeur. On implique beaucoup les enfants au niveau oral. Par la suite, les enfants ont des stations. Ils effectuent un travail écrit qui a rapport avec nos thèmes mensuels. Par la suite, on fait des centres libres. Les enfants choisissent leurs stations, les font en rotation pendant la semaine. Et ils apprennent aussi toutes sortes de chansons pour qu'ils puissent acquérir le plus de vocabulaire possible. Dans le cadre du programme de français, nous avons la collection de 100 objets qui se trouve être le programme du jour 100. Au centième jour, on fait une parade dans l'école. Les enfants adorent ça. Et on fait différents programmes comme le Club des petits voyageurs pour la section française et un programme de sciences également. Euh, je dois vous dire que le but premier de toutes les enseignantes de maternelle, c'est de faire en sorte que vos enfants aiment venir à l'école et qu'ils développent vraiment un attachement face au milieu scolaire parce que nous sommes la pierre de base du cheminement scolaire de vos enfants. Alors, selon moi, enseigner à la maternelle, c'est le gros lot. Les petits sont des éponges, alors on a la chance de leur montrer tout le vocabulaire en français pour qu'ils puissent en faire des phrases et ils absorbent tout, tout, tout. Et en plus, ce qui est intéressant d'enseigner avec les tout-petits, c'est qu'ils n'ont pas de filtre. Donc, il y a plein de choses qu'ils nous disent, qui nous font rire à longueur de journée. Ils sont adorables. Merav Luz, I'm a Hebrew teacher at Hebrew Foundation School uh, for the past 23 years. Um, I teach kindergarten and sometimes the higher grades. So in kindergarten, it's their first exposure to the uh, Hebrew language and the Judaic studies. Uh, so for example, when I teach them about um, Yom Ha'atzma'ut, which is Independence Day, um, I like to bring them the experience of visiting uh, places in, in Israel especially the, uh, the market in Tel Aviv. So the doll corner is being transformed into a huge market where the kids have 
um, the opportunity to bargain and buy things and use Israeli money. For Hanukkah, for example, we do um, archaeological digging, going back to the time of the temple and looking at coins and talking about Beit HaMikdash. So I just feel my passion and love for my country. I bring it into the class and I think that's what makes uh, the kindergarten unique at our school. So for every holiday, the kids are exposed to um, the tradition. Uh, we do it through science, uh, food tasting, baking, uh, songs, technology, uh, stories. Everything is done in Hebrew in the beginning of the year. Everything is done in Hebrew in the class. Um, the songs, the prayers, the blessings for every holiday. When I see the kids um, later on in life and they tell me that they went to Israel on vacation or they are looking forward to going and seeing the country and just to see the love and excitement in their eyes, um, that's for me a success. And I know that I was able to accomplish um, and give them what I really wanted to give them. So my colleagues at the kindergarten at Hebrew Foundation School are Natalie and Marie-José in the French department and Samantha in the Hebrew department and Bonnie in English. Bonjour, mon nom est Marisol Tremblay. Je suis enseignante en français et mathématiques en quatrième, cinquième et sixième année primaire. J'enseigne aussi l'éthique et la culture en sixième année. Je travaille à l'école de formation hébraïque depuis 2004, mais en vérité, je suis ici depuis beaucoup plus longtemps, car ma mère était enseignante en première année, donc je passais mes journées ici depuis que je suis toute jeune. Moi, ce que je trouve de la beauté de notre programme mathématique à l'école de formation hébraïque, le programme Défi, c'est que de la première année à la sixième année, les programmes ou les, le curriculum enseigné est beaucoup euh, connecté entre les années. Donc, chaque année, le contenu qu'on enseigne de la première année va se transférer à la deuxième, puis à la troisième, mais le niveau de difficulté va augmenter. La même chose pour le curriculum de quatrième, cinquième et sixième. Ils sont bâtis un peu de façon pyramide, c'est-à-dire qu'en quatrième, on bâtit en cinquième, on continue à bâtir par-dessus ce qu'on a appris en quatrième et en sixième année aussi. Donc, ce que j'aime, c'est que les enfants commencent dès la première année à apprendre des notions qu'ils vont voir en sixième année, sauf que le niveau de difficulté va augmenter. Le programme des filles, c'est ma passion. Euh, à l'école, moi, je n'étais pas une élève qui était très forte en mathématiques. J'avais toujours de la difficulté à comprendre le concept derrière la notion, le pourquoi. Euh, donc, je trouve que le programme des filles, parce que c'est un programme qui est très concret, on travaille beaucoup avec manipulation, euh, permet aux enfants de comprendre pourquoi ils font certaines choses. Ça permet aux enfants aussi de pousser leur connaissance. Donc, pour les enfants qui sont peut-être plus forts ou plus enrichis, ça leur permet, parce que le, le programme s'appelle « Défi », d'avancer, d'apprendre des nouvelles choses, puis peut-être se pousser un peu plus loin. Tandis que les élèves qui peut-être souffrent de difficultés d'apprentissage, puisque le matériel il est très concret, on travaille beaucoup avec manipulation, ça leur permet d'avoir euh, une meilleure base, ça leur permet de mieux comprendre les notions enseignées, de toucher, de visualiser. Donc, je trouve que c'est un programme qui est pour tout le monde, un programme qui permet aux enfants forts d'aller plus loin et de pousser leurs connaissances. Puis pour les élèves qui ont besoin peut-être d'un petit peu plus d'aide, de vraiment pouvoir comprendre les notions enseignées. Puis moi, en tant qu'enseignante, euh, j'aurais beaucoup aimé avoir ce programme-là quand j'étais jeune. Je pense que j'aurais appris euh, de façon euh, plus simple, j'aurais été plus motivée, euh, puis j'aurais été plus forte en mathématiques. Ce qui me rend le plus heureuse quand j'enseigne les mathématiques, c'est les enfants. Parce que les enfants adorent les maths. Euh, les enfants adorent travailler en mathématiques. Puis ils adorent aussi euh, être leur propre personne puis pouvoir avoir une pensée critique qui est peut-être différente de d'autres. En mathématiques, on voit qu'il n'y a pas toujours juste une façon de trouver une réponse. Il peut y avoir multiples façons de trouver une réponse. Donc les enfants, entre eux et avec moi, souvent on trouve différentes 
façon d'arriver à un même résultat. Ça les motive de pouvoir s'inspirer entre eux. Moi, ça me motive en tant qu'enseignante parce que j'apprends souvent de mes élèves pour l'année suivante, quand je vais enseigner, je me rappelle de qu ce que j'ai vu avec mes élèves du passé. Euh, donc, je trouve que c'est un programme interactif, euh, c'est un programme motivant, puis surtout, c'est un programme qui permet aux enfants d'aimer ce qu'ils font. En français, à l'École de formation hébraïque, on a la chance de travailler avec du matériel de français langue maternelle. On a des manuels de français langue maternelle et nous, on est très heureux de ça parce que ça permet non seulement à nos élèves d'avoir un vocabulaire beaucoup plus enrichi, mais aussi d'être préparés pour les examens du ministère, ainsi qu'avoir la possibilité de continuer au secondaire euh, en français langue maternelle. À l'école de formation hébraïque, nous avons aussi une technique bien à nous pour aider les enfants à s'autocorriger. Euh, la technique qu'on utilise s'appelle la technique du code couleur. Euh, cette technique-là commence dès la première année, puis elle continue jusqu'en sixième année. Ça permet une continuité, ça permet aux élèves de développer des stratégies qui leur permettent de corriger leurs phrases ou leurs textes de façon plus confiante. Ainsi qu'on euh, a appris que certains de nos élèves utilisaient aussi cette technique-là à leur arrivée au secondaire parce qu'ils étaient à l'aise et ça leur permettait, permettait de mieux corriger leurs erreurs. Hi, my name is Bonnie. I'm an English teacher here at Hebrew Foundation School. Here at HFS, we want to instill a love of learning in every child. We foster their independence and give each child what they need to succeed. The students are encouraged to be critical thinkers and problem solvers. Uh, they have excellent analytical skills and debating skills. Okay. This is Brady. He's our story tool that we use to reinforce oral and written communication skills throughout the grades. In kindergarten, our activities are very hands-on. We use and incorporate technology to reinforce stories such as Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, where the children have to create their letters climbing up the tree and dancing and then falling down the tree where they're saying the sound of the letter as well as words that begin with that letter. We create our own board games, we design various uh, books using Book Creator to illustrate and draw our own stories which then get shared with the other students in the class and sent home so the families can enjoy them as well. One of my favorite programs is our Book Buddy program here at HFS. The grade six students as part of their English writing program develop questions and come downstairs to kindergarten and interview the students, their favorite color, their favorite pet, um, things that they like, and then the grade six students go back upstairs and over months develop a story using the kindergarten student as the main character. Once that story is written and edited and illustrated, they then bring the story back downstairs to kindergarten and share it with their new kindergarten buddy. So something that I'm really excited about is when you see the students at the beginning of the year as non-readers and shy and a little reserved. As the days and weeks and months go on, they become really more independent thinkers and students coming out of the shell, finding out and learning more about who they are as a friend, as a member in the community. And it's really wonderful to see that progression as well as their educational progression going from non-readers to readers and writers. Hi, I'm Stuart Cohen. I'm the English language teacher for grade three, four, and five. In English, we're working on complementing each subject. We're working on adding detailed description, self-reflection into our writing. Uh, with each grade, we're going to build on these skills and impart different aspects of our English language to get deeper into the meaning and the messages behind the writing. Uh, from early on, we introduce picture books, uh, moving on to novels, looking at abstract ideas, concrete ideas, um, looking for uh, the depth of their understanding when it comes to self-reflection and uh, relating to the important ideas of a, of a story. Uh, we explore themes of um, fairy tales, fables, family relationships, and then we move on to a gentle introduction to the Holocaust. Uh, it's a very important piece of our English curriculum. Bonjour, je m'appelle Ravid Benaroche. Je suis enseignante d'hébreu et étude juif à l'école HFS. 
J'enseigne la troisième, quatrième année. Je suis aussi enseignante des élèves avec des difficultés Vanguard de la quatrième et cinquième année. The stories of Parashat Teshuvah, we start in kindergarten. They get a portion of the Torah every week. Torah studies at HFS start officially in grade two. They start to learn Sefer Bereshit in, uh, from the Chumashon using Torah. Our HFS students learn how to use their own Siddur independently. They are very proud to be able to participate in prayers uh, at the synagogue or Shabbat, leading the Shabbat at their homes. They sing the songs for Shabbat from their Siddur. The Siddur is used every day at HFS. We do uh, morning, afternoon prayers. The kids uh, lead the prayers in class. They are very proud to use their Siddurs. When I hear kids telling us they want to travel and visit Israel, it gives me so much joy. I know we did something right. When they think of other people, they treat each other with all the values that we teach them, it gives me joy to see it every day at school. We always hear parents come back and tell us how proud they are when their kids leading a Seder or their kids uh, doing the brachot for Shabbat, the kiddush on Shabbat. Kids take initiative uh, at home use, to take their siddur home for Friday night and to show their parents what they learned uh, from the parasha. They love, they love using what they learn in class at home. Hi, I'm Rhonda Yegergarn. The children call me Mora Rhonda. And I've been at HFS for about 10 years now. I teach grade one and grade two Hebrew. So one of the most wonderful things about being a student here at HFS is that you will learn Hebrew from the ground up. Your parents do not need to know any Hebrew. If they do have prior knowledge of Hebrew, wonderful, but it's just a bonus. The children will learn Hebrew all on their own and they will be very successful. So it's really quite amazing. At HFS, we teach Hebrew through an amazing program called Tal'am also I tell them. It's a very interactive spiral program that starts from grade one all the way to grade five. And the way the program works is it's extremely interactive, it's colorful, there's stories, songs, games, workbooks, reading books, music, everything to immerse the children in an all Hebrew environment. Once the children hit grade six, they amalgamate all the skills and all the knowledge that they've learned in the previous grades and they build on the skills, they add Jewish history and they get them ready for high school. So the reason why we're so passionate about teaching Hebrew at HFS is because it covers so many different areas. It covers the, the children's history and who they are and where they came from. It covers modern day, how we communicate as Jewish people to one another. Um, and of course, tying into the state of Israel and the language that they speak there. It ties into religious practice. Will they know how to sing their prayers when they go to synagogue for Shabbat? Will they know how to um, read through the Haggadah on Pesach and the children learn how to run a Seder? So when we teach Hebrew, it's not just history, it's not just religion, and it's not just modern language, it's actually all three. Mon nom est Martin, je suis enseignant à l'école de formation hébraïque depuis 25 ans. J'enseigne l'activité physique depuis le, la maternelle jusqu'à la sixième année. L'avantage de les voir de la maternelle à la sixième année, c'est que Contrairement à un enseignant qui les voit pour un an, moi, c'est comme un projet sur sept ans. Hi everyone, my name is Monique Ben Saran. I teach art and I also teach music. And uh, my mission here at HFS is to build a rapport with every student that I see from grade one to grade six and build on their confidence, build on their creative expression and at the same time, build on their skills, which are fine motor development and uh, just to be confident on whatever it is they try to attempt and not to be afraid of making mistakes. Because uh, I make 
intentional mistakes in front of them so that they feel much more comfortable. So in the young grades, I see cutting and fine motor development in its early stages. And as the years progress, I see them build in their confidence. I see them uh, not afraid to take on a new challenge. In the activities that I do, I, I set different uh, levels of difficulty. So they get to choose different levels of difficulty within an activity. Um, they get to learn in a comfortable environment from others around them who are doing different things. So uh, talking about music, compared to art, art is a lot of eye-hand coordination. When I talk about music, I introduce the ear to that. So um, I train the ear. It's called ear training in music, uh, in music terms. So they learn how to read notes. They learn how to coordinate rhythm to their body motions, body percussions. They learn how to coordinate their ear to listening skills and to focus on listening um, activities that do transfer to other subjects. So in music, they experiment with different um, musical instruments. They're taught how to read music. They're taught how to play different instruments throughout the years. And later on, they learn about the history of music um, and the social aspects and the environmental aspects of music as well. Bonjour, je suis de retour ici pour vous parler de notre programme de sciences. Le programme de sciences à l'école euh, suit le programme Éclair de génie qui a été créé par un grand scientifique québécois. Donc, les élèves à travers le programme euh, suivent la démarche scientifique, ce qui leur permet d'apprendre, de réaliser des expériences, mais aussi de pousser leurs connaissances de façon amusante. La chance des élèves de notre école, c'est aussi qu'ils ont un laboratoire scientifique qui est fait pour leur sécurité, donc ils ont un lavabo, ce qui leur permet de créer diverses expériences. Donc ils ont un local qui est inspirant, qui est décoré avec plusieurs objets, plusieurs connaissances sur les sciences, euh, ce qui n'est pas partout pareil dans les autres écoles. So a technology coach is someone who helps teachers integrate technology into their daily lessons. So technology becomes a part of the curriculum and not so much an extra or something that's added on. Um, as a bonus or as a reward. It's really integrated into their activities. So the students have access to a lot of different tools here at HFS, including Makey Makeys, Firo Robots, uh, Lego Robotics, Merge Cubes. Of course, we have iPads in grade five and six, which really opens up a lot of different possibilities with respect to technology. Most kids obviously are, are naturally curious and most kids gravitate towards technology because it is exciting, it is new, it is fun and it brings so many different possibilities. It really does give them a creative outlet. So whether it's programming a Sphero to do something neat or uh, green screen videos, they can transport themselves to a different world or in Minecraft where they can build their own world, um, it really does give them so many opportunities to express themselves. They're so naturally curious that they find different ways to do things. So rather than just doing a PowerPoint presentation, they might use Minecraft to illustrate their thoughts, uh, or they might make a green screen video, or they might build a robot and have the robot tell the story, um, or use scratch coding to tell the story and animate uh, a movie. So it's pretty incredible to see just what the students do with it when they take it and, and run with these different tools. Hi, my name is Jennifer Rose Marin, and I am the Director of Student Services here at Hebrew Foundation School. My team and myself work together to meet the needs of each and every student at Hebrew Foundation. 
Each student has their own profile. And so when we look at a student's profile, we don't consider just their marks or their academic strengths and areas of need. We look at the whole child and think uh, in, in which ways does this child need support. Um, perhaps uh, it's you know some kind of coaching in social skills, or perhaps it's remediation where we can target specific skills to help the child succeed uh, better in class. So in terms of enrichment opportunities, uh, beginning that this is a trilingual school and that in and of itself is uh, a more rigorous program. Uh, when a child is excelling um, or meeting, you know, meeting the standards and going, going above, what we do is there are various uh, opportunities for enrichment. We do take part in uh, many contests. Uh, we take part in a math contest. There's a Bible contest. Uh, so those are more formal opportunities to participate in, uh, but as well, day to day, the teachers in the classes would be responsible um, for providing enrichment opportunities for those students as they see fit. And so what we do with enrichment often is we will seek to dive deeper into, uh, into ideas that would require higher level thinking skills so I think on a day-to-day -day basis, while the students are at school, they are learning things like how to get along with others, conflict resolution, uh, and they may need a little bit of guidance along that path, and that's also what the student services team is here to help provide. We have an anti-bullying program that we've used here for a couple of years. Uh, we use the WITS program, which teaches kids responses that they can uh, that they can have if they're faced in if they're in a situation where they're feeling bullied. Uh, we also are very very proactive. Uh, my team is on top of any kind of um, bullying behavior when it starts, so that we intervene uh, before it escalates. So I have been a classroom teacher for 23 years. In 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 that time working with children. I've seen firsthand the effect that um, a positive school experience can have on a child uh, going well into their future. I think the skills we equip them with are important, but I also think uh, equally as important, if not more, is the approach we take with a child. Uh, what, what they learn, what they hear, how they feel about themselves, that, that, that stays with them for a lifetime. Hey, my name is John Lavery. I'm the Social Development Coordinator here at HFS. I primarily am engaged in teaching social emotional learning, partnering with teachers, and coaching self-regulation skills. We know kids learn best and are happiest when they are calm, alert, and focused, and my job is really to help them find ways to do that. Hi, I'm Stephanie Hidechuk, and I run and manage the Vanguard program here at HFS. The Vanguard program is a very unique and specialized program here uh, designed to provide academic support for students with learning difficulties. What makes it even more special here at Hebrew Foundation School is that our school is the only uh, school that offers this program in the West Island. Hello, my name is uh, Diane Duhame. I have been the Early Intervention Specialist here at HFS for 13 years. One of my primary jobs is to coordinate and run the IDEPEL program. This is a French literacy testing tool. IDEPEL stands for Indicateur Dynamique d'Habileté Précoce en Lecture. I also have a, a very exciting part of my job, uh, which I love to do, and I have, um, I have the honor to go into our CPEs to be able to uh, get to know our children, our incoming kindergarten children, uh, before they arrive in our school. So this really allows us as a team of teachers and as a team of administrators to get to know our students and plan for them a year ahead of time. So instead of waiting until September when these kids come into our building to get to know them and to start planning for them, we start the planning even before they arrive here at our school. To open up the school in August, we decided to put a multidisciplinary team together of uh, board members, teachers, administrators, lay leaders, and medical specialists. The goal of this team was to really put together a solid safety and security plan. This included hand sanitizer machines uh, that were touchless, 
Uh, we put plexiglass around all the desks. We purchased fans for the hallways and the classrooms and also HEPA filters in all the different classrooms. This and other things really protected us. Then we moved on to HR. We also decided to hire a full-time nurse. Not only was the nurse in charge of taking care of the kids, but also uh, being up to date on all the guidelines and recommendations coming down from Santé Publique and also the government. So due to the work that we did before we started school, we are ready for anything that happens, whether it's distance learning or staying in school for the rest of the year and keeping everyone safe. Hi, I'm Stephanie Havis and I'm the Admissions Coordinator at Hebrew Foundation School. We hope that you enjoyed the presentation and that you found it informative. We also hope that it gave you a good and solid overview of our curriculum at our school. We want you to know that so many amazing initiatives happen in our school beyond the classroom walls. For instance, we have field trips, we have special guest speakers that come in, we have extracurricular activities at lunchtime and after school hours. Our student service team has led an initiative to implement busy break stations throughout the school. There's also so many school-wide initiatives that promote community building and school spirit, such as Chagigat, Kabbalat Shabbat, and assemblies. A few nuts and bolts about our school. Our morning starts at 7.45 and finishes at 3 p.m. for kindergarten. We offer extended day until 6 p.m. There is a hot lunch program that offers catered meals from Paradise Kosher. We have a uniform policy where we have formal dress days and gym days. What is unique about our school is that we do offer a section francais so that we can accommodate students who do not have English eligibility. And now for the application process. The applications for kindergarten are now open and will close on January 29th. Following the application deadline, we will contact you to set up a family play date where we will be able to meet your little one. We are currently offering private tours for any family who is interested in coming in to see the school. We are a private school, but we're also a community, and there are financial programs available for any family who is looking for a Jewish education for their child but may not have the means please contact me to get more information. We want to thank you for taking the time to watch our presentation. If you have any questions or any concerns, we realize we've given you a lot of information here tonight. Please don't hesitate to reach out. We look forward to welcoming your family to our school very soon. Thank you. Andy. Une des choses que j'aime voir quand, depuis que je travaille à l'école, c'est de voir des anciens élèves qui arrivent et qui veulent inscrire leur enfant à notre école. C'est sûr que ça me fait sentir super vieille, mais c'est le sentiment de fierté que j'ai quand je les vois. Je me dis, wow, on a fait une bonne job à l'école. It's it's not just a, a job for me, a profession. It's it's also a passion. It's something that. Uh, I feel very closely connected to and, and giving back, especially to my community, uh, to the place where I was raised. I love seeing our students enjoy their connection with, uh, with the language, with, the, with Eretz Israel, their connection to who they are. They love what we learn in Hebrew when they come to Hebrew class. They always have this light in their eyes. They shine because they know that this, this is what they take with them when they graduate HFS. Là, c'est de voir dans leurs yeux, là, comme l'émerveillement de dire, « Oh, j'ai réussi quelque chose que pour eux, au départ, était impossible. » Le fait qu'ils l'accomplissent, qu'ils viennent me voir, ils sont tellement fiers, puis moi, je suis fier d'eux, et c'est ça, c'est vraiment ce qui est de plus valorisant dans, mon, dans ma profession. When a child comes to me and says, « I can't believe I did this » or « I am so proud of myself », I, those are words that are taken from the kids' mouths, and when I hear that, I know I have done my job.